This roti spiked my blood sugar by 86 points. And this one, zero spike. I tested nine different flours to find India's healthiest roti and the results will shock you. For the past year, I have been testing hundreds of Indian foods on my continuous glucose monitor, discovering shocking truths about what common foods do to our blood sugar. Today's experiment might be my most important yet because it's about something nearly every Indian household eats multiple times a day. Roti Growing up in an Indian household, roti was non-negotiable. Breakfast, roti. Lunch, roti. Dinner, you guessed it, more roti. But here is what most people don't know about the wheat we use today. With India becoming the world's diabetes capital, over 100 million people with diabetes or pre-diabetes, we need better options. And after testing nine different flowers, I found them. I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor that tracks my blood sugar every five minutes. Over 250,000 people follow my food experiments because I show exactly what happens inside my body when I eat different foods. I have conducted these detailed flour experiments to help you discover which options are truly blood sugar friendly, not just what's marketed as healthy. My goal is to give you practical, evidence-based alternatives that you can start using immediately. Now let's dive into which traditional flours actually deserve a place on your plate and which might be damaging your health without you knowing it. Let's start with rotis made with regular whole wheat atta, what most of us eat daily. Two rotis sent my blood sugar skyrocketing by 86 points. That's like eating almost 5 teaspoons of sugar. Keep in mind, I am not diabetic. For someone with diabetes or insulin resistance, the spike could be even higher. But before we dive in, here is exactly how I tested. Two rotis per test, 25 grams of flour each, a touch of ghee on top, no sabji, no dal, just pure roti. Why? To remove all variables and get clear data on how each flour affects our blood sugar. Remember that glucose responses are highly individual. While my results provide directional insights, your personal response might differ based on your unique metabolism and health factors. Let's start with our baseline regular whole wheat atta, the most widely used grain in India. Two rotis sent my blood sugar skyrocketing by 86 points. This dramatic spike has everything to do with how our wheat has changed. In 1969, Norman Borlaug received the Nobel Prize for developing high yield wheat varieties that helped address global hunger. But this hybridization had an unexpected effect on our bodies. The new wheat contains a form of starch called amylopectin A, which raises blood sugar and insulin levels at an alarming rate. These frequent insulin spikes throughout the day can lead to insulin resistance and chronic diseases. Even the way we process wheat has changed. Modern roller milling, which separates the endosperm from the bran and germ, has revolutionized bread making, but at what cost? Now next up is Amranth flour. Despite all the superfood marketing, it caused a 79 points spike and has a high glycemic index of around 107. For reference, the glycemic index of table sugar is 65. Now Amranth is fascinating because it is one of the rare plants that contains all 9 essential amino acids, making it a complete protein source. It is naturally gluten-free and rich in lysine which supports calcium absorption and collagen production. But despite these impressive qualities, the blood sugar impact is hard to ignore. Following that is Emma wheat or Kapli flour, a truly ancient grain that archaeological evidence shows was being cultivated in the Indus Valley over 8,000 years ago. While it's often marketed as a healthier option, my test showed a blood sugar spike of 74 points. Yes, it's better than regular wheat and interestingly, its unique gluten structure makes it tolerable for many people who react to modern wheat, though it's still not safe for celiac patients. But there is a lot of marketing hype here. It has a relatively high glycemic load of 20.8 and the slightly tougher texture might take some getting used to. Moving on to more promising territory, Jowar or Sorghum, the world's fifth most important cereal crop. 
caused a 57 points spike. While that's significantly better than our previous contenders, what's really fascinating is the resilience of this crop. It can survive with one third less water than wheat, making it crucial for climate change adaptation. Some varieties even have antioxidant levels rivaling blueberries and pomegranate. The real challenge with Jawar is technique. Being gluten-free makes it notoriously tricky to roll out. Trust me, I went through quite a few failed attempts. It's also quick to dry out, so you will want to consume these rotis fresh. Close behind is Ragi or finger millet with a 56 points spike. Here is what's interesting about Ragi. It has three times more calcium than milk. It was traditionally given to warriors in ancient India because it forms a thick gel in the stomach, providing sustained energy release. Its hard outer shell makes it incredibly resistant to spoilage, meaning you can store it for long periods without losing its benefits. But I should warn you about its strong, earthy flavor. It's definitely an acquired taste. Now we are getting to our top performers. But before that, if you are finding these insights valuable, hit that subscribe button. I test new foods every week to help you make better choices for your health. The next flour completely changed my understanding of traditional grains. Jaw or barley flour, one of the first crops ever domesticated and called the source of all medicine by ancient Egyptians. It showed an impressive result with a 50 points spike. The science backs up this ancient wisdom. It has the lowest glycemic index of all common flowers thanks to its unique beta-glucan fiber, which forms a gel-like substance in your gut to slow down digestion and improve insulin sensitivity. But I will be honest, it has a distinct taste that might take time to appreciate, and forming the dough requires extra effort. And finally, among our traditional flowers, Bajra or Pearl Millet emerged as the winner with just 49 points spike. This remarkable grain requires 8 times less water than rice to grow, making it one of the most environmentally sustainable options. Its high fibre to carb ratio creates what ancient Indian texts called the grain that keeps you full, a unique time release effect on blood sugar. It's completely gluten free and packed with iron, protein, and fibre. However, I should mention that its dense nature can be a bit heavy for sensitive stomachs. Now here is where it gets really interesting. What if I could cut these numbers even further? I did two game-changing experiments. First, I wanted to show you the effect of pairing these rotis with right sabji. So I took the same jaw roti with protein-rich palak paneer sabji. The outcome was mind-blowing only 33 points of blood sugar spike. That's less than half the original spike. The fiber, fats and protein in the vegetables dramatically slowed down glucose absorption. This is a perfect example of making a typical Indian meal blood sugar friendly. When your blood sugar rapidly spikes and crashes, it creates a cascade of effects in your body. Think of it like a roller coaster. Exciting for an amusement park, but not something you want happening inside your body multiple times a day. These constant fluctuations affect everything from your immediate energy levels and mood to your long-term health. They influence how hungry you feel, how much inflammation builds up in your body and how quickly you age. What we have learned through these experiments is fascinating. The grains our ancestors relied on, particularly bajra and jaw, consistently outperform modern wheat in terms of blood sugar impact. But perhaps the most important discovery was how adding the right accompaniments can dramatically improve any flour's impact. When I paired jaw roti with protein-rich palak paneer, the spike dropped to just 33 points. Proof that the traditional Indian food combinations have wisdom built into them. Now, I have saved the most mind-blowing result for last. When I tested my homemade keto flour blend, the results were unprecedented. Virtually no blood sugar spike at all. This special mix combines almond flour, coconut flour, ground flax seeds, pumpkin seeds and psyllium husk powder for binding. Made with nutrient-dense, low-carb ingredients, this blend offers an impressive nutritional profile. 
packed with healthy fats, fiber, protein, and essential micronutrients like vitamin E, magnesium, and omega 3s. What makes it exceptional is how these ingredients work together to create a balanced flour alternative with almost zero impact on blood sugar levels. However, there are trade offs. It's considerably more expensive than traditional flours, requires careful measuring of multiple ingredients, and creates a different texture than conventional rotis. The dough can be trickier to handle and may require some practice to perfect. But if blood sugar control is your absolute priority, this homemade blend might be worth the extra effort and cost. My mission is to continue providing you with evidence-based food insights that can transform your health one meal at a time. That's why I have already completed my next set of experiments, testing every major variety of rice to find the one that's most blood sugar friendly. The results were so surprising, I had to test some rice varieties twice. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications to catch that video as soon as it drops next week. And remember, small changes in what we eat today can prevent big health problems tomorrow.